on the show, we bring you a very unique enterprise, ornamental bird keeping. Yes, it is done here in Uganda. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. I decided now to do birds because it is a bit simple compared to animals. They require small space and they don't take a lot of time. In Uganda, wild birds are slowly but steadily getting into the space of being domesticated and given a new twist to life. Some people do it for beauty and others well to earn. There are some enthusiastic entrepreneurs who have embarked on giving this business a chance. Bird is a beautiful creature to keep. Noah is a young farmer who has always loved to farm given his agriculture background. His passion has driven him to join the unique business of keeping ornamental birds. To him, it is a lucrative one. Professional, I study finance. I work with an architectural firm. I also do marketing with one of the network marketing companies in town. But I have passion for birds. So here, I keep birds and uh, I mainly keep ornamental birds. And I have a wide variety, over 21 different breeds, and I'm still adding more. Because that's what I love to do. I love to spend my time with birds. Here I have 10 different duck breeds. I have uh, the common ones, the Muscovies, I have Peking ducks, I have Cayugas, Silver Appoyad, Indian runners, Welsh Queens, I have Ruins and uh, there are many. Then I also have uh, silky bantams in the chicken family. I have Braham chicken, I have Kushi. It's a rare breed, mostly kept for fighting. Then I have Polish chicken. I have uh, different types of guinea falls, the white ones, dotted, white shares. I have the Valsharian guinea falls. Then I have turkeys and pigeons. That's what I keep here. These are local turkeys. They are called bronze, but here we, we call them local turkeys, but they are bronze. Then we have the white ones, the bourbon red, and the blue slate. Then we have the khaki campbells, that khaki in color. We have silver apple yard, and these are the local muscovies. Here we have uh, pekins, they are the majority we keep. Then up there we have uh, Brahams, Vulture and Guinea Falls, the African Dwarf Chicken, Silky Bantams. On this side we have Indian Runners, Cayugas, Chinese Geese. Yeah, those are Cayugas. Beginnings are usually our biggest shortcomings. However, this did not affect Noah so much from chasing his dream. He grew up in an agriculture family and the love for agriculture pushed him into bird keeping. The COVID period too opened more opportunities as Noah took it upon himself in doing a lot of research about birds. We all had too much time on ours as the lockdowns took center stage. Well, he is now a proud farmer of this rare enterprise. Well, uh, first of all, I'm from an agricultural family. So growing up, I really wanted to do something related to agriculture. But at the end of the day, I found myself in a different field. But the love for agriculture never went off me. So I decided now to do birds, because it is a bit simple compared to animals. They require small space and they don't take a lot of time. So for a long time, I used to keep chicken, the local ones, some few broilers. But you know the challenges with chicken. Diseases are always there. Now, during COVID, the first phase of COVID, so we were all home. Though for my case, I was working online, but I used to be from home. Now, that's the time I went to internet to start searching about different birds. Well, I love so many, but now where to get them was a problem because people don't have them in Uganda. Though some people have, but they are not popular. They are not known. They do it. They are not like on social media and so on. But I kept searching, then I met some, he's a Nigerian, he was doing Peking duck. I think he was the first to do Peking ducks in Uganda, I'm not sure. 
So I talked to him, but he, he had sold all his. Then I, I met a certain lady called M. Lisa. She's known in farming. So she referred me to someone who is called uh, Mrs. Helen. She had picking ducks. So that's when I got started. But I never had money, so I went and bought three ducklings. And I started from there. So I breeded them. But now when I brought them, so I started joining different groups for ducks. There is Team Duck Africa is in Kenya, but I think the whole Africa is in that group. So I connected with some Kenyans. I realized in Kenya they have almost all types of birds. I remember it was COVID, the border was closed. But there were some buses which were coming to Uganda like twice in a week. So I connected, so I started buying one by one. They are quite expensive, very expensive. Oh, some breed goes to millions. Yeah. There are some unique breeds which are very, very expensive. But I kept buying slowly, slowly as time goes on. So then they also started, because when they start producing, now getting others is easy. You sell and you buy the other types you want. So it's been almost a year now and some few months, and I've collected so many. And I'm still adding more. That's how I started. It's quite an experience having to interface with these different birds on this farm and above all, Noah is so passionate and embraces this income generating activity. He borrows a leaf from our neighboring countries. Is the, this is a silver apple yet. It's a very beautiful bird. The fare goes for 480,000 mature ones. But they have a process called molting, so they lose all the colors. They lose the feathers, they lose the colors, then they start growing afresh. So it is normal, it is original color, it's just coming back. It's among the most beautiful birds. So this is silver apple yet. Then uh, we have, this is khaki campbell. Khaki campbell, this is a male one. It's mainly kept for eggs. It's the best layer among all birds. The best. More than 300 eggs in a year. That's how best it is. When they start laying, they lay every day non-stop. Then they will just take some break for some few months and they start again. When do they start laying? This one, six months. When you feed them well, at six months, they start laying. How you differentiate the male ones in the, in the exotic eggs, the way you can differentiate the male from female, the male one always has these feathers called the drake feathers and the male ones are quiet they don't make noise when they reach around three months their voice disappear <laughs> but the female ones are very very loud actually all the noise you are hearing are for the females then i also have turkeys here these are the female ones these are the common turkeys we have here females 95,000. Then I have the male ones here. Hey, come out. I give giant breeds. When they are fully mature, eight to 10 kilos. Mature males, 120, 125. For turkeys, I only sell mature ones. I don't sell young ones. Yeah. So I have, I have quite a number inside. This, 125. Then I also have the, the bourbon red. They are red in color. They are not here. I have the blue slate. It is blue in color. I will bring them here when I finish the construction. We have the pekins. It is the majority we keep here. And it is among the exotic birds, it is the common one people have here so far. Most people keep them for meat because they grow so fast. Within two months, they are big enough to be slaughtered. Like you would consider them as broilers in the chicken family. So in the duck family, these are the broilers. So it is the one we keep in majority. This one we sell eggs, 6,000 per egg, a tray, 160. Then we sell the ducklings, we hatch every Thursday at 15,000 per duckling. So all these ones are laying. We have just collected the eggs. Because we always collect the eggs around 9 in the morning. Then uh, 
We have other birds here. This is a unique breed. It is very short. It's called the African dwarf chicken. So, this is a silky bantam. It has grown, so it has lost its beauty. More, this one, people like them so much, they just keep them as pets in their homes. It's not a good layer, they just keep it for beauty. So there are two types. This is Santin type. It has the normal feathers, like for chicken. But there is another type which has feathers like for, it's like cotton, cotton, like silky, silky. Yeah, so there are, there are two types. Then there is also a black one, a black type. So this is, this is a male one. I had so many, but most of them were have been taken. This one, a mature one like this, one is 350,000. Two months, a pair is 250,000. So mostly we sell them two to three months. This is the Valsharan guinea fowl. I think it's the most beautiful in the, in the, in the guinea fowl farm. There were many, this, we had here around 50. So they took them all and I remain with one. A pair is 450,000. This is the vulture ringing for This is still young, it's just grown. I have this bird, it's called Braham chicken. Actually, it is the biggest chicken breed. This one is just two months old. They are not common in Uganda, so it's still growing. So when they grow, they are tall and they have like feathers up to the feet like like you're putting on a trouser up to the feet so they are called braham this one at this size a pair is 350,000 I had some they were all taken so I also decided to buy these two pairs I bought from a friend in Nairobi <laughs> so they have been here for one week I'm not going to sell them <laughs> I'm going to multiply them some were taken to Arua. I have a friend, he's a missionary, and he's also putting up a bird collection center for study purpose. So he took some. So this is Kushi, it's called Kushi. Kushi. I don't know anyone else who keeps them in Uganda. Because this, you can only get them in Kenya and Tanzania. They are quite expensive. In other, here we keep them for their beauty. But in other words, they are kept for fighting. They, are li they like fighting so much. And you don't put them with other birds, you will find them bleeding. So people, if you go to YouTube, like in Pakistan, you'll find there are like festivals when, where birds fight. So you bring you as I bring mine, we bet. If mine wins, I take your money. That's, so this one has been bought, 450,000. You can, it's five months, so he has not brought all the mature colors. Then I have Polish chicken. Uh, they have a very big crest on the front. Hey. People keep them for beauty. This is a male one. This is a female one. These have been bought. So they are waiting to go to their new homes. This size, a pair is 350,000. Taking care of these birds is important routine that cannot be missed. 
their feeding should be given much attention and priority because their lives depend on it. Noah has learned a load in this regard as he explains. Well, when it comes to ducks, they need different nutritional requirements from chicken. You realize ducks grow very fast. Now they need more calcium in the body, which is not in the chicken feeds, which is in the market. So it forces you to learn how to mix your own feeds. Yeah, now the fact that I have different type of birds, they don't feed on the same type of feed. They all have different nutritional requirements. So these feeds are not common in the market. So you have to mix them yourselves. You buy different ingredients and you make, depending on the bird you are going to feed. Like ducks eat a different type, uh, the chicken eat a different type, the guinea fowl eat different types. Like most of them, there are some breeds that feels comfortable being in free range because they want to eat grass the whole day. It is their life. So we also want them to have natural life because the local chicken, the local ducks, it is natural for them to be outside and feed on different type of whatever they come through. But then there are some, we have to keep them inside. Another thing, these ones which move freely outside are a bit cheap. Then there are some you can't afford to lose. So we cage them inside. Like recently, a neighbor's dog came and caught one of the ducks and was laying and killed it. So such you don't you wouldn't expect them to to be outside. And that duck I brought from Kenya, it costed me 500,000 rich here. So that's why most of the expensive breeds, we put them inside. But like in the evening hours when I'm free, I bring them out to eat grass, do some exercise, run around. They are bad, they want to feel that freedom. Azola duckweed is a special feed for the birds and Noah is not taking any chances. He has decided to try and manage cost cutting by buying some for multiplication purposes. So this is it's called Azola duckweed. It's used for feeding birds. Uh, the, the way to grow it, you make a pond, you put water in the pond. When you put water, you put the plants. So they have the capacity to cover the whole pond within seven days. So when they have covered the ponds, you just start harvesting. Actually, you can cut the feeding cost by 70%. So you just harvest like this. Then you give the birds and they like it so much. You can use it for feeding rabbits, chicken, ducks, all types of birds. So we are going to make a big pond there, expand it, and we shall be feeding our birds with, with Azola. People who want to start planting it, it begins from 100,000. The planting material begins from 100,000. Not, not so much, just a small quantity, but it's going, to exp it's going to multiply so fast. So this is Azola duckweed. There are two plants here. The green one is duckweed. This broad one is Azola. So they grow together. You can decide to, to put them in different ponds or to put them in the same pond, but they grow together. Yeah. So I cover it as I wait for it to multiply because when I open, they will eat it up within one minute. Bird management can be as easy once the basics are well taken care of. I have a brother, though he's also a student, and uh, he's also not always home. But with these ones, managing them is easy. So when I know I'm not going to be at home the whole day, I fill their, their water. Because when I fill them, it will take them the whole day. Then we give them food only twice. At 10 in the morning and in the afternoon hours. So at least even if I'm not around, my brother can, can do that. So they are not that, because the only activity is here, water, give them feeds, and pick the eggs. So it's not complicated. And then also, every two months, we dewarm them. We give them calcium and vitamins twice a week. 
that's all. Ducks, we don't vaccinate them. Yeah, that's the, another advantage. You don't vaccinate them. Once you give them calcium, vitamin, they are healthy. You deworm them. They are living in a good environment, good food, clean water. They are good to go. Much as Noah is in this to make money, he often breeds the birds to increase on the aviary. He has devised means of keeping the costs low, but still achieve this satisfactorily. On this aviary, the local ducks hatch all the eggs from the different duck families. Creativity is at its best. However, one must be knowledgeable enough. Naturally, if a local duck is laying and you touch its eggs, actually it leaves everything. But ours here, now we know how to handle it. This small room is like my hashing machine. So sometimes when I get big orders, I take my eggs to the hashery. But I prefer hashing them naturally. So the local ducks, I keep them majorly for hashing. We have so many, they move outside, but when they are laying, they lay from here. Now when they have laid, when they have reached like 10, 14 eggs, we decide which eggs they should hash. If we want to multiply the Cayugas, we give them Cayuga eggs. If we want them to hash Indian runners, we give them Indian runner eggs. If we want them to hash Pekins, we give them Peking eggs. So when they, when they hash, because when you hash with a local duck, it is easy to raise a duck egg. When you hash with a machine, you will need heat at least for one week. You need to take care of the ducklings. You need to give them food. You need to put them in a safe place, of which when you're busy, it's different. But when you hash with a local duck, all you have to do, put them in a room, put food and water. The mother will take care of the babies. So that's why we use local ducks to hash the eggs. And also we can use turkeys or local chicken. They also hash the duck eggs. The only thing is, if you want the local chicken to hash her chicks and the duck chicks together, you first remove the local chicken eggs. Then you leave it to sit on the duck eggs for seven days. After seven days, you add the chicken eggs, then they hash on the same day. These are guinea fowls, they are still in a brooder because with guinea fowls they need a lot of heat so they stay in a brooder for around two months. When you bring them early enough, they die. So here I have three types, though they, they like jumping, I have the pure white, that big one, I have the dotted ones, this time. When they grow up, they are the dotted ones, the common ones. Then uh, I have the white chest. This one, when they grow, they are dotted with a white chest. So they've just made one man. They were around 40. We are going to sell some and breed some. Thanks for watching Seeds of Gold. Next week on the show, we dig deep into the market for the birds, the challenges, and get to know if Noah has indeed any solid achievements he is proud of as a result of keeping these ornamental birds.